artistic visualization of social manifestations of physical problems. In the research of art, countless artists, after processing various events, reveal the hidden inner secrets of each event in the form of secret and symbolic elements. With the revelation of penetrating secrets in the lower layers, the hidden onset of all fields, also including the field of medicine, has appeared in these works. Among the great artists whose works are full of symbolic secrets, we can mention Jan Steen, a famous artist of the Golden Age of Dutch, whose Baroque spirit is blown in his work. Jan Steen was known for studying the works of his predecessors, and was often inspired by them in his constant search to create valuable conceptual works. His paintings cover multiple themes such as society, religion, romance, and other topics, serving as a means to convey moral messages. One of the subjects that this outstanding artist of the Baroque era has dealt with is the story of Prophet Moses and Pharaoh's crown. This narrative, although it mentions Moses disposing of the Pharaoh's crown in the Old Testament, in its hidden layers, reveals the secrets of Prophet Moses' stuttering. An investigation of this painting holds significance for medical reasons and makes it valuable to study. Stuttering is a speech problem that disrupts the normal flow of speech. A child who stutters repeats or prolongs sounds, syllables, or words. Stuttering may make it difficult for a child to communicate with others. For most children, this stuttering is part of learning to speak and will gradually improve, but persistent stuttering requires treatment. There are different types of stuttering. 1. Developmental stuttering. This is the most common type of stuttering in children. It usually occurs when the child is between 2 and 5 years old. It can happen when a child's speech and language development lags behind what he needs or wants to say. 2. Neurogenic stuttering. It may occur after a stroke or brain injury. It happens when signal problems are available between the brain and the nerves and muscles involved in speech. 3. Mental stuttering. It may occur after trauma or with thinking and reasoning problems. In the story of Moses stuttering, the narrative is that after Moses was adopted by Asia, Pharaoh's wife, Pharaoh's constant worry was that Moses would eventually become a threat to him and kept saying, I know that this child will ruin my life in the end. But, even so, he became fond of Moses and sometimes, he would hug Moses and put him on his feet. Once, he had placed Moses on his feet, Moses reached out and threw Pharaoh's crown from his head. Pharaoh got furious and present prophesiers interpreted. This action of Moses is very ominous for Pharaoh and his kingdom, so Pharaoh decreed to kill Moses. But, Asia prevented the murder of her adopted son by begging and pleading. She begged Pharaoh that, Moses was just a child, who lacks the capability, to differentiate and identify things. First, scrutinize and assess him to ascertain, whether his actions were intentional and whether Moses is truly a prophetic figure, or if it was just a childish mistake, that was unintentional, and anticipated by ordinary children. A trial involving fire awaits Moses. The setup of the trial, included a brazier of burning red coals, and a container brimming with gold coins placed in front of the child. With his hand, outstretched Moses attempted to seize a handful of coins. At that instant, Gabriel descended, bringing Moses along, and beckoning him towards a blazing pile of scorching coals, ensuring to firmly hold his hand throughout the approach. Moses placed a chunk of coal in his mouth which subsequently caused a painful burn on his tongue and mouth. This resulted in his onset of stuttering. In the painting of Moses and Pharaoh's crown, Jan Steen describes the entire event with symbolic details as beautifully as possible. The crew and retinue with various clothes and poses, are standing in front of the door, in a dynamic composition, in such a way that, they look overall different from the servants and retinue, who evermore line up in a formal and orderly method, and have created a crowded scene, full of turmoil, and an atmosphere full of inflammation and excitement. The magnificent arch doorway and the columns, which are imbued with classical features, announce the occurrence of this experiment in the palace for political purposes. This is a threshold that no sane person should cross. Steen with spears in the hands of Pharaoh's soldiers indicates that passing through the arch means the risk of losing human virtues.
However, the troubled and worried face of a woman among the crew makes it clear that she intends to pass through the spears, and it turns out that it is Moses' mother who cannot bear to watch such moments. He also gives identity to the figures in fine details and paints all the faces bright and almost everywhere else, especially behind the pharaoh's throne, slightly dark. He intends to inflame this base with dramatic lighting with the contrast of bright shadows. This conflict distracts the viewer's focus on one part of the work and makes the audience's gaze continuously circulate throughout the painting. In the middle scene, the prophesiers and Pharaoh's soothsayers, who had prophesied that Moses would destroy Pharaoh and the kingdom of Egypt, appeared with ridiculous clothes and strange hats, as if they were going to convince Pharaoh to kill Moses. Even a sorcerer with a cunning face in Pharaoh's ear whispers and warns of the imminent danger that this child may have. In front of the prophesiers, a teenage servant is kneeling a little away from the brazier, trying to keep his face away from the heat of the burning red coals, and is turning the coals upside down. The newly matured personality and servant's behavior makes the audience wonder if Moses possesses the intellectual capacity of a grown child or not. In the thematic focus and the center of gravity of the painting, the main actors come to the field with luxurious clothes made of shiny satin. Asia's beautiful and elegant face stands out in front of the dark blue cloak of her husband Pharaoh, who is kneeling on the ground and opening her arms to shelter Moses, making a begging gesture with her right hand, expressing that, has it been proven to the world that Moses is just an ordinary child and is not considered a threat? Pharaoh lies on the throne, between the sorcerer and Asia. They are providing evidence in both cases. He holds his scepter, as if it were a lethal weapon, and appears ready to strike a child, and now, he is in a difficult position, and his desire to kill Moses has subsided. The scepter is the most valuable royal jewel after the crown, and the symbol of claiming the position of the creator and the sign of judgment, in such a way that, it destroys every obstacle in its path. Pharaoh, astonished and confused, holds the royal scepter, and, his staring gaze calls us, who are the audience and spectators of the event. He seeks judgment, as if we are standing inside the palace, and watching this event, and Pharaoh is desperately asking us for a solution. In the lower frame of the painting, Steen depicts Moses as a toddler child, crying and in pain while showing his burnt tongue and injured mouth, with his index finger, and rushing to Asia's arms. In fact, by painting such an event, Jan Steen recounts the cause of Prophet Moses' stuttering. But, because this problem has been with him throughout his life, and when his brother Aaron was sent to accompany him, and his assistant was appointed in his speech, it can be said that the cause of stuttering of Prophet Moses was not developmental stuttering or mental stuttering caused by the fear of life in Pharaoh's court, but the reason for it was physical injury, as is evident in the painting. Upon analyzing this artwork, it becomes apparent that the idol in front of the Pharaoh's crown, which is a symbol of paganism, has been broken and detached from his crown, and fallen directly under the pharaoh's throne, and his golden shoes. It seems that the first rays of godliness are shining behind the footsteps of toddler Moses, who has kicked and broken the royal crown and its idolatry symbol, also in stark contrast with pharaoh's footwear, which is the symbol of arrogance, opulence, and self-centeredness. It appears that an important message is being communicated, but Moses is unable to articulate it with his burnt tongue and injured mouth. It can be acknowledged that Moses' is stuttering is a rebellion against the dominant language. Because the domination's language seeks the stability of the monarchy, the continuity of governance, the durability of slavery, and the norm is based on the past and everyday life. On the other hand, his stuttering is from the future. Its function is freedom, innovation, breaking the chains of captivity and slavery, changing the situation, and disrupting the order of language, which is the instrument to rule over people. The index finger that Moses puts to his mouth invokes God's command. It is as if God is saying to him, O oh Moses, patience is the best medicine. 
in this way, until the time when society becomes receptive to persuasion, I shielded you from harm and ensured your safety, enabling you to take charge and inspire others eventually.